only the Starship plug without crew should start again after landing. NASA sees SpaceX on track for Starship refueling tests again in 2025. Artemis Orion hits shield problems significantly, according to NASA Inspector General. After four years of delay, the Boeing Starliner is finally taking off with people for the first time. NASA astronauts Batch Wilmer and Sunita Williams are about to arrive to take part in the first astronautical launch of the new space saga. Going forward, the schedule holds. But at the moment it looks very much like it. Weather forecast is 90% go for the launch of the Boeing Starliner. In the spring, Tuesday morning, for 34 a.m. Central European Summer Time on May 7. Everything on the ISS was also prepared for the launch of the Starliner. As already reported last week, the Starliner had to use the Kagodang CRS-30, so CRS-30 will be undocked from the ISS and the current crew dredge and crew 8 will be repacked. Both scraped successfully last week. Last Sunday, Kagodang was able to undock CRS-30 from the ISS with a delay of just one day and then successfully land off the coast of Florida. On Thursday the entire Crew-8 crew was able to crawl into their Dragon and in about 45 minutes. Maneuver your Dragon from the front docking port to the top docking port of Note 2. Totally the crew, clear. If the docking fails, you don't want to leave anyone behind on the ISS without a return flight option, so a precautionary measure. Since the Starliner during the approach maneuver and the subsequent docking will fly various manual test maneuvers with the ISS. This is a test mission and the front docking port of the ISS is absolutely necessary for this Starliner mission. On a later mission, the Starliner could then also be used at the upper docking port like the Dragon. Back to Starliner Budge and Sunny, both experienced test blood in the U.S. Navy, will use their extensive experience to distort space, to put its first state through its paces with astronauts. This historic flight will launch the crew into space on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. By the way, this will be the first time since 1963 that astronauts on an Atlas rocket are shot into the owl. At the time of the Mercury program a predecessor vision was created, today's Atlas V rocket was used to shoot John Glenn and three other astronauts after him into Earth. Back then, by the way, the Atlas was made of ELE steel, which is very much in vogue again today. Speaking of history, if the landing with crew is successful. By the way, it will be the first U.S. landing of a capsule on land. So far all American capsules otherwise, no watering. This mission not only represents a critical test for Boeing Starliner, but also a significant milestone for NASA's commercial crew initiative, which he aims to further reduce dependence on Russian Zeus spacecraft. Depending on the success of this mission, the next flight Starliner 1 be a six-month operational mission in 2020, and will be identical to the NASA cruise flights with SpaceX except for the means of transport. Boeing and SpaceX both received contracts from NASA in 2014 to transport astronauts to the ISS and back, with SpaceX receiving a $2.6 billion contract and Boeing receiving a $4.2 billion contract. Well, and while there were various delays at Boeing, SpaceX has already carried out 11 operational crew missions to the ISS since 2020, SpaceX also had a few problems and it was a few years later than planned. Further delays recently occurred due to problems with the Starliner's counterfeit system and the fact that much of its wiring was wrapped in flammable teep. But what wasn't Boeing's fault, the material was released by NASA. And only later did it become apparent that there was a real fire risk. I'm really looking forward to the start, as we're currently moving in childcare hasn't been clarified that day. NASA is pleased with the wrong steps in the development of the Starship's on-orbit refueling. Starship, as a fully reusable launch vehicle, is optimized to launch into low Earth orbit. For direct launches into higher energy trajectories or even escape trajectories away from Earth the knot load shrinks very quickly. Therefore, SpaceX is already in the early development plans for an ultra-heavy lift rocket refueling in orbit is always included. With refueling you essentially get a third stage in orbit except that it is as large and powerful as a fully fueled second stage and that we are revolutionary. For this to happen, refueling in orbit must work and this has never been demonstrated on such a scale. Or the now apparently successful test on the third fully integrated Starship flight was the largest zero-difficulty fuel transfer ever undertaken. Yes, NASA continues to confirm that SpaceX is well on its way. It's next year to demonstrate refueling from a Starship in that space.
the fuel transfer technology is essential for space explained for the Starship mission beyond low Earth orbit. For NASA, this is in turn a crucial technology for the return of humans to the lunar surface in the 8MIS program. The Starship Human Landing System, HLS, for short, which is intended to bring astronauts to the moon starting with the 8MIS-3 mission, cannot be achieved without refueling. Refueling is bound to become one of SpaceX's most challenging missions in the years ahead, surpassing any mission they've undertaken before. Nevertheless, SpaceX remains resolute in its determination to achieve yet another groundbreaking feat. Recently, both the company and NASA have meticulously outlined a clear roadmap and specific procedures for this ambitious mission. Despite facing skepticism about the feasibility of the task, Elon Musk recently affirmed SpaceX's commitment to solving the challenges associated with refueling by the end of next year. He emphasized that refueling alongside full and rapid reusability is pivotal in realizing the vision of a multi-planetary existence. Indeed, refueling will play a vital role in pushing the boundaries of exploration, with one of its primary applications being the upcoming Artemis III mission, where SpaceX aims to land humans on the moon for the first time in over 50 years. Subsequently, refueling will also be indispensable for Starship's journey to Mars. While the development of this system will undoubtedly require substantial time and effort, SpaceX intends to commence this endeavor next year. However, there's optimism that they may accelerate this timeline, possibly completing it by the end of this year. With SpaceX currently averaging three flights per year, a figure expected to increase to six or nine in the future, as previously indicated, achieving this milestone will pave the way for mastering the refueling mission. Therefore, Targeting the end of 2025 as a milestone is deemed appropriate, allowing SpaceX ample time to refine the system for the Artemis III mission scheduled for September of 2026. So what progress has SpaceX made thus far? Having a recent NASA Advisory Council meeting, Deputy Associate Administrator Amit Keshatriya provided insights into the progress of the refueling system, particularly highlighting achievements in Flight 3. He noted, on Flight 3, they did an inner tank transfer of cryogen, which was successful by all accounts. In his presentation, Keshatriya showcased slides detailing the process of transferring 10 tons of liquid oxygen from the header tank to the main. Additionally, other essential processes outlined in the propellant transfer demo flight system review phase were successfully completed. Looking ahead, SpaceX's focus for the remainder of this year will be on developing the hardware for the system, encompassing both the Starship Target, HLS, and the Starship Chaser, or the Tanker, and as anticipation builds, the pivotal ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer demo is slated to occur in 2025. Firstly, SpaceX will conduct tests to assess the slosh of propellant in the tank when Starship maneuvers, as well as determine the necessary settling thrust once the vehicles are docked to facilitate propellant flow between them. Keshatria elaborated on this, stating, the point of their flight test program before we do this is to make sure they fully understand the slosh dynamics, fully understand how the eulage is being maintained, and what the settling thrust needs to be. Additionally, SpaceX engineers will meticulously analyze factors, such as the propellant's status and assess the effective transferability of propellant from one starship to another. These tests are essential for getting insights into how fuel behaves in zero gravity and will contribute to enhancing their understanding of propellant flow dynamics. Subsequently, SpaceX will conduct tests to evaluate the boil-off of liquid methane and liquid oxygen, as well as potential leakage in space. Both of these fuels undergo extreme cooling to transition into liquid form for use in Starship. However, during loading into the fuel tank for testing or launch, the fuels will heat up, reverting to a gaseous state, evident in the vending process. This phenomenon will also occur in space, where the vending process can result in fuel loss. While vending helps alleviate internal pressure by accommodating fuel volume expansion, excessive loss can lead to wastage, prompting SpaceX to seek ways to mitigate it. After ensuring the efficacy of these processes, SpaceX will proceed to the primary step, launch. The two vehicles, Starship Target and Starship Chaser, will be launched with a predetermined interval between them. The number of Starship Chasers deployed will be contingent upon factors, such as fuel, boil-off, and leakage. Starship Target will initiate the launch sequence, requiring sufficient power to await the approach of Starship Chaser and facilitate the connection for fuel transfer. Presently, it appears that SpaceX and NASA intend to launch both Starships from the same launch pad, 
specifically the existing launch pad at Starbase. However, if the number of Starship chasers exceeds expectations, alternative launch systems such as those in Florida or the second tower at Starbase, slated for construction in the near future may be utilized. Connecting two Starships presents a significant challenge, requiring them to maintain a consistent speed to remain engaged throughout the fuel transfer process. Moving on to the pivotal step of fuel transfer, various predictions have been made in the past regarding the principles that would facilitate fuel flow from one ship to another. Some speculated methods include leveraging the fly speed of the Starship chaser to create force or utilizing a pump. However, according to the latest revelation, the fuel transfer will be pressure-based. Specifically, the pressure at the Starship chaser will exceed that of the Starship target, prompting fuel to flow from high-pressure areas to low-pressure ones. This approach is expected to be more straightforward than previous methods. As Starship target reaches orbit with minimal fuel remaining, its low pressure contrasts with the Starship chaser's higher pressure, resulting from the expansion of cryofuel due to temperature increases. By capitalizing on this natural pressure differential, SpaceX can achieve the desired effect without significant additional impact. Upon completion of refueling, the two vehicles will disengage, and the Starship chaser will initiate the deep orbit burn. Meanwhile, the Starship target, now fully fueled, will proceed with its mission, with destinations such as the Moon for Artemis missions. As SpaceX progresses towards mastering the refueling mission, we eagerly anticipate significant milestones including uncrewed missions of the Starship HLS and the rollout of new Starship iterations. During initial tests, SpaceX will utilize the original Starship models. However, the uncrewed Starship HLS mission will employ a specialized version designed specifically for lunar missions. While the refueling process with the Starship HLS remains consistent with that of the standard Starship, testing with this dedicated prototype will enable SpaceX to meticulously evaluate the system's performance in practical scenarios, laying the groundwork for crewed missions scheduled approximately a year later. To achieve this, SpaceX must finalize production of the Starship HLS prototype by early next year at the latest. Before the first Starship landing with crew on the moon SpaceX has signed up to NASA's Human Landing Systems contract. Committed to testing ship-to-ship -ship fuel transfer and a robotic landing of a fully massed Starship HLS on the lunar surface. There was also an innovation here, now it was also agreed that. That after a first robotic landing, a return to the lunar orbit should also be demonstrated. Sounds logical to me, why not test more mission-critical milestones on a mission like this? What if the ascent stage lunar landing sphere's single non-redundant engine had failed? Sure, there are a million points where the Apollo program impressed and where maybe some ships can go. You could also think, what if for me the thought was a successful landing and then consciously having to stay there and the command module pilot then returns alone? It's a pretty crazy idea, or what can happen? Not back alone, but with you back to the Starship or the Starship refueling. The concept is considered very complex, or SpaceX competitors always present it as complex and risky. With several Starship starts transferring fuel to a depot in low Earth orbit, which in turn is used to send the HLS Starship to the Moon. Estimates range from 10 to 20 Starship starts for a single flight to the Moon. Elon Musk repeatedly says that SpaceX regularly docks with Dragons at the ISS, which, according to him, would be significantly more complex than docking two Starships. Nevertheless, of course, explosive, it should refuel in orbit, that Starships will not be technically feasible in the foreseeable future. It would be over with Starship HLS and Artemis astronaut on the moon. At least until Blue Origin. Last year, NASA also signed a contract with Blue Origin to develop its own crew-mounted lander, the Blue Moon, ultimately giving NASA two options for follow-up to the mission. This also applies to future problems with one of the systems then would not jeopardize the major respiratory program plans. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.